Hey everyone, this week we are going to start a kind of a new series, and what I mean by that is I'm going to go through kind of some advanced statistics and to help you be able to calculate them in R with college baseball data. So this week we are going to be going over a particular statistic called WOBA, which is weighted on base average. WOBA, weighted on base average. Let me tell you a little bit about it with a shiny app that I built called NAIA Baseball Statistics. So any of you fans of NAIA Baseball, feel free to check this out. Robert L. Fry .io slash NAIA Baseball Statistics. Anyways, in this little detailed description, I wrote it out as such. WOBA, known as weighted on base average, gives credit to a batter based on the value of each outcome. WOBA measures a batter's total offensive value based on relative values of each distinct offensive event. Unlike on base percentage, which is only concerned about getting on base, and batting average, which is only concerned about getting a hit, WOBA gives value to batters across all events walks, hit by pitches, singles, doubles, etc. WOBA also weighs hits more accurately than slugging percentage by weighing each vent in proportion to its run value. And here's the basic formula where WOBA equals the weight of non intentional walks times walks, not, uh, hit, hit by pitches times hit by pitches, so on and so forth, divided by plate appearances minus intentional walks. And you can see here non intentional walks, just expected runs, so on and so forth. But how we can use this to kind of measure offensive value in college baseball is to be able to accurately measure based on the linear value or the um, kind of the run value of each event to a specific batter to a specific year to make comparison across years. That being said, let's get into our code. Of course, we will always load library tidyverse and library baseball R into our set. Now with the baseball R package, we can look up a school. So we'll say Vandy, this particular team will do is Vanderbilt. And we'll say school ID lookup Vanderbilt. And I'll kind of show you what it looks like. So Gives us the school ID, the year, the division. Um, you can see that 2019 is missing, that's okay. One quick way to kind of change that is we'll say Vandy equals, and then we'll use the edit function. Vandy would then, it, basically the data frame turns into a spreadsheet and you can go into the year and say, let's change 2020 to 2019 in this case. So after we do that, we can see now the data reflects that. So now we have all years from 2013 to 2019 ready to go. Now the next thing that I will introduce is something that I've been working on personally with full play-by-play -play files and I will share with you during this episode is the kind of the, if you've seen the Fangraphs Guts page, feel free to check that out. Just Google search Fangraph guts basically it gives you the linear weights of each event that i mentioned earlier as well as other events like the woba scale um, runs per plate appearance runs per win um, centralized fit but you'll kind of see what it looks like here shortly so we'll say read csv again i'll share this file in my github to access this file so please go to my github page when I do release this video to access this file. So NCAA guts dot CSV strings as factors equals false. We'll run it and I'll kind of show you what it looks like. So I have it for the division one. So I have year 2013 through 2019 division one and then the league WOBA listed as such the WOBA scale 2015 was such a high high year in terms of WOBA scale. And then each linear weights, run stolen bases, runs caught stealing is NA right now, but I'm still working on that. And then runs per plate appearance listed as such, runs per win, and then the FIP constant, which we will use in a later episode. But that allows us to accurately get the linear weights for every team. So 
we're just going to start a basic list. We're going to start with Vandy Hit, and that's the list we will create. And we'll do a very common thing that I've done in most of my videos, which is running a for loop. So for i in one to number of rows, Vandy, squiggly brackets, indicate what we want in our loop, and we'll say Vandy Hit i with the double brackets to indicate what element of the list we want, so first, second, third, so on and so forth, and then we'll use the baseball R function called NCAA scrape, and we'll say team ID equals Vandy school ID I indicate what uh, element in the data frame that we want, so basically that's saying we want 2013 through 2019, and it'll iterate through each year, and then year equals vandy dot or sorry the dollar sign to indicate what column year i and again that's just iterating through 2013 through 2019 and then just to make for certain we will say type equals batting so we will run all this code and it should it shouldn't take too long but again it, it varies by machine so pretty uh pretty quick there uh being allow us to get that so now now we're going to create a data frame called vanderbilt and we'll say vanderbilt equals we'll use plier and the kind of the double colon indicates what function we want to use in the plier package since plier is a package ld ply and a, Essentially, this converts a list of data frames to a data frame. So, ldplyvandyhit Vandy hit to a data frame. And I'll show you what this looks like. So, we go up here, Vanderbilt, and we see every year from 2013 to 2019. Though 2019 is missing, that will be a fix in Baseball R sometime in the near future um, being able to get that adjusted but so so as of right now we do have all of this data from every SEC or every Vanderbilt uh, player from 2013 to 2019 let's kind of mutate some different co columns as well as getting rid of any uh, non player id specific stuff so here's what we'll do with that because we are going to have to use the player id for something specific in terms of calculating woba as well as um the division um so what we're going to do here is we're going to say vanderbilt equals vanderbilt piping operator and then mutate from the dplyr package, which is under tidyverse. And we'll say school equals Vanderbilt conference equals SEC, and then division equals one. And then another piping operator and say filter is dot na player ID equals false. And essentially what that means is we're going to remove any player IDs where there's nothing there. So let's go back into here. So you can see down here, like there's two NAs because those are those are totals. So instead, we will just remove them from the analysis. So run this and be able to see towards the end, Vanderbilt, SEC, D1, and then only instances with a player ID. With this data that we do have, we do not have a intentional walk column. And the reason why is it can be harder to obtain for the more the later back here. So I think for 2019 and 2020, you can get the intentional walk columns from the stats.ncaa.org page pretty quickly. But prior to that, it was a little bit more difficult in obtaining. So what we're going to do is create a custom function and a lot of this function is getting from get ncaa game logs um, in the bill petty baseball r package so essentially i'll kind of just break it down for you real quick so 
We're going to call it get intentional walks. It's a function where it asks for the player ID and the year, and then that squiggly rack to indicate what you want in the function. So the year ID, the batting ID, the pitching ID gets, um, don't necessarily need a pitching ID. So we'll remove that, but year ID, batting ID, and then it takes those two, kind of the year ID, the player ID, and the batting ID into that URL to read that URL and then get the kind of year that it is in and then it converts those names from the first row, removes the first row, and then what I did here was since it's listed as like the 2012-2013 season, so on and so forth, I created another data frame and then did a left join that allows us to get the season. That way we can filter by season whatever year you put in and then pull the intentional walk data. So we'll run this function. And now we can say, again, run another for loop and say for I in one to n row Vanderbilt. And then what I like to do now for kind of some of these that take a little bit longer is within the SV misc package. So make sure you have that installed. SV misc double colon and get what function we have. And I'll say progress. And essentially that gives us the progress of each um, each iteration it goes through. So I'll kind of show you here shortly. So for I and then the number of rows, Vanderbilt again. So it gives us the progress. And then we'll say Vanderbilt.ibbi. And then we'll say get IBB, that function we just created. And then um, Vanderbilt player ID I. Okay, what? However many Vanderbilt players from 2013 to 2019, each iteration, and then the same for the year. So Vanderbilt year I. And that allows us to go through each iteration. So we'll run this, and it kind of it shows you kind of that progress of how many iterations it's running through. So it's currently on the first iteration, goes to the second iteration, so on and so forth. Um, and again, this might take some time to run, depending on what machine you have. But after that's done, we'll be able to go on to the next step. We have to do some data cleaning. And what I mean by that is we're going to have to replace some of these NAs and adjust the kind of the column types for it to be accurate. If you saw in the data frame, there were some NAs in doubles, triples, um, hits, home runs, etc., where we need to replace those with zero. Otherwise, getting that WOBA will not accurately run in R. So how we do that is we'll do this Vanderbilt equals Vanderbilt piping operator and now we'll say mutate at and then we'll say vars which is what variables you want to mutate and I'll say at bat hits doubles triples home runs walks hit by pitches sacrifice flies sacrifice hits and then intentional walks and the reason why they're X2B and X3B is because that's what they are listed in our data frame. So you can kind of see here. To mutate those, and then we want those converted into a numeric variable. So then we can have it as numeric. We don't need the uh, parentheses there. Now we'll do it again and say, we'll say replace an A. That way, for any NAs we may have, we'll replace them with zero. So we just have to do a list. So we'll say list, and then list off each variable. So hits equals zero, doubles equals zero, triples equals zero, and then home runs equals zero, intentional walks, zero, so on and so forth. So Sacrifice hits, sacrifice flies, walks, hit by pitches, anything that could potentially influence the idea of getting that WOBA. Now, we'll also create a variable called single. So 
and this time we'll call it mutate, and we'll say mutate to follow suit with the other variable, say x1b, and we'll say it equals parentheses hits minus doubles minus triples minus home runs, things along those lines. As well, we will add plate appearances, which are calculated as such at bats plus walks plus hit by pitches plus sacrifice flies and sacrifice hits. We're going to create a left join. So we'll call it Vanderbilt again, and this time we'll say left join Vanderbilt, comma, the NCAA guts data frame that we have that is, again, in my GitHub page as a CSV file. Please go to that, otherwise this code will not run because you don't have those values. And then by equals combine division and year so we can get those proper linear weights now i'm not going to run this code because i already have it but it allows us to get those proper linear weights for each season that they played and allows us to adjust for moba so now let's create a function called get woba now we're going to create a function called get woba and what essentially this function does is get that WOBA metric. So how we're going to do that is we're going to say get WOBA function DF, which stands for data frame. And then in our squiggly brackets, DF WOBA, which we're going to add a new column called WOBA and then round four bracket or four parentheses, and then basically just do each event by the specific column name. So we, because of that, um, because of how we got the values from that left join, we can now have that in our data frame. So just each of these column names multiplied together and then divided by plate appearances minus intentional walks. That way we don't discredit guys. We will say get WOBA DF, function DF, DF WOBA. And then here's quickly how you do it. Vanderbilt equals get woba vanderbilt you can run this code you go all the way to the end here and we have woba values we can go into kind of the data frame and be able to see which players had the highest woba as vanderbilt had a star-studded lineup of guys like guys like jj blade uh, Dansby Swanson, um, Stephen Scott, Brian Reynolds, the list goes on and on. So we can see that by doing this. Vanderbilt filter PAs are greater than or equal to 200. So all guys who pretty much played a full season. And then arrange descending. Woba, and then we will actually add a head, which gives us the top five or the first five. So we can see these Woba values really high compared to their league Woba or the league Woba. So again, guys like JJ Blade was a top draft pick last year. Austin Martin, who's going to be a top draft pick this year. Brian Reynolds, who plays for the Pirates. Dansby Swanson, who is the shortstop for the Braves. And then Will Toffey in a minor league system. So this is really cool. Feel free to visualize this if you would like. But thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned a lot from this video. And I hope that you can see the value of WOBA as it pertains to to college baseball and to be able to calculate it correctly at the division one level um, more divisions will be coming here shortly but again thank you for watching i'll continue with this series this is the first of however many advanced stats i feel like going through with this stuff in college baseball so Stick, like and subscribe if you do enjoy this content because you do not want to miss out on the rest of this content. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.